Then if I was to track my, my purchase orders, I can do that by going to my expenses on the left-hand side. So I'm in the vendors. Now, normally you'd be able to sort by the purchase order, but this is un this is for the last 365 days and we're working in the past here. So I don't have that sorting option because this wasn't as recent, you know, the transaction. However, I know that it was in here. So I went to Primerica and then there's the, there's the purchase order. You can also go to the expenses, by the way, if you're in the other view, that would be under the uh, get paid and pay area and we would be under the vendors and there's the vendors and you can also search your purchase orders by going to the expenses tab and then expenses up top and then filter by purchase order once again i deleted the first date so it doesn't have that 365 rule and then there's your purchase order right there as well so if I was to go into the other view, that's in a little bit different location and the other view, it's under the bookkeeping and uh, yeah, bookkeeping and then transactions and then uh, the expenses, no sales tab for the purchase order side. So there it is. No, I was right the first time. It was under the expenses. There it is. And then you could sort by the purchase orders over here if you so choose. Okay. So there it is. Now the next step would be that we imagine the inventory comes to our warehouse with a bill inside of the of the box. So now we can enter it into the system as a bill, or we might just enter it into the system and pay for the bill of the inventory that we have received with an expense form or a check form. So for example, if I hit the drop down, we've got copy to a bill. That would be the easiest thing to do. We can create the bill from the purchase order now, and the bill will actually record the transaction. Now a bill will not impact cash. That's an accrual component. It's gonna be increasing the accounts payable. So I'm gonna go through here and just say the terms. I'll keep that as is. And we'll say the date, let's say is on the 12th, let's say. It's still way too early in, in the year to tie out to the bank feeds. But the point is that down here, the, the bill is pulling in the item, not the category. So the item is what's gonna drive it increasing the inventory account by the $30. And the other side is gonna to go to cat is gonna to go to accounts payable in this case, because it's a bill. You can see it's linked to the purchase order. And so that's gonna be uh, and then and then it's gonna be for the for the $30 and it's gonna track the inventory. Now you could also you could also turn on like a uh, tracking of the uh of a customer tracking the bills on the customer let me just show you how that looks real quick i'm going to close this out but without recording it and i'm going to go to my cog drop down let's go to the account settings up top and i'm down here in expenses on the left hand side and you have this option to make expenses and items billable so if i turn that on you're going to see another kind of form in your bills track a billable expense and items as income is the default typically a good one and single account so i'm going to go ahead and just show you what that looks like so i'm going to save that and turn on make expenses and items billable we'll also okay so i'm going to go okay close that out let's go back into the bill so now i'm going to make this into a bill again copy it to a bill and so there we have it and so now we've got this added item that says it's billable what that means is that I could pull this item over to a customer if I add a customer. Let's add a customer, customer one. Now you've gotta be careful of doing this billable item, but I just wanna kinda of show it. I'm just gonna put the minimum data for the customer. So when you're pulling it over with an inventory item, it's gonna pull over the cost, I believe. So it's a little bit tricky, but the idea is that you can put information into a bill or expense form that you're gonna that you want to pull over as a line item into the invoice or sales receipt that you're going to later create from it again be very careful of doing that with inventory as we'll see here there's a little bit of a glitchy kind of situation with it but i want to just show you the concept of it all right so let's save that i'm going to say save and close if we see what happens on our financial statements go into the balance sheet run it now we've got the inventory went up so if I go into it, the inventory went up when we entered the bill, not the purchase order. If I go into the bill, 
there's the bill that increased it. It's closing that up, scrolling back to the top on the income statement, running it again. Uh, nothing happened to the income statement because we purchased inventory. Back to the balance sheet. The, ch the accounts payable is the other side, the $30. All right, so now there's also gonna be a sub ledger for inventory. I'm gonna right click on the tab to the right, duplicate it to, see, to run another report track in the inventory by inventory item reports on the left hand side i like just typing in inventory summary inventory valuation summary let's do and that's fine we'll keep it there and you've got one item at 30 dollars. now this does not match what's on our balance sheet because that first piece of inventory we put on the books we did so without without so here we've got $30, here we've got 80 because that other item we put on the books with a journal entry without using the items.